Hi everybody, this is Brian with the Instructional Technology Coordinator Team. In this video, I'm going to show you as quickly as I can how to start a Google Form and then build it out so that it emails feedback to the person that you'd like it to send uh, feedback to. We often use this with teachers uh, when we build things like walkthrough tools, but it can also be used by students um, to send feedback or by teachers to send feedback. So we're going to start by uh, working here in Google Forms. I'm going to show you how to quickly start the form. So I'm in my Google Drive. I'm going to just quickly build a form. All right, so we'll just use the this example, walkthrough form. Now the kinds of questions you ask here are important because whatever you collect here is what's going to be reported back. But I'm just going to show you the key things uh, that you might want to uh, include in this. So I always split these out. Um, I split it out into a first name and last name as a short answer. You can do this different ways depending on what it is you're looking for. And then I put the email address of person, whoever that is, student, whatever it might be. Okay, good. So then I can also ask uh, whatever the information is. Which color do you like best? Blue or red? All right. Great. So there's my quick form. I've got that all set up and ready to go in my sample walkthrough form. Now something I like to do is I like to keep these all very organized so I've got this in a folder where my sample form goes just to make life a little bit easier for myself later on. Alright, now I have a form all set to go. I'm going to go to the responses tab and I'm going to create a spreadsheet. That way all of these uh, responses go into a spreadsheet and that's what I need in order for feedback to be sent back to the person that I am going to be working with. So um, let's go ahead and use my form just a couple of times so we get some data in there. Now the part that a lot of people wonder about is how do I go ahead about getting this data back to somebody? So the first thing I'm going to show you is that you need a you need an add-on called Autocrat. That's the one that I like to use the most. Um, but before we even jump into Autocrat, we've got one other step. So I'm going to go into my folder, and this is where I really like to have it organized. I'm going to create a new Google Doc. And this is going to be the document where all of the data from my form merges into the feedback that somebody gets. So I'm going to go ahead and call this my walkthrough form feedback template. And I use the word template just because that helps me later on know what I'm, what I'm pointing it at when we get further down the path. So I'm going to say good morning. And you can make this look however you'd like it to look. It's just a Google Doc after all. Um, today, I'm going to put in these two little carrots here. And I'm going to type the word timestamp. Well, where does that come from and what does that do for me? So if I jump back over to my spreadsheet here, you can see my sheet headers here. I have the word timestamp. That's when this was recorded. So I'm going to use that here to indicate once the uh, spreadsheet autocrat add-on gets, gets created, it's going to indicate to Autocrat that when you see these two carrots and then timestamp, it's going to fill that in for each line. So the first one being sent to Brian is going to read 12-12 and then all of this right in here. And this is really just a placeholder for the data that is in the spreadsheet. And you do need to be case sensitive with this. So let's see how I have it there. Capital F, capital M. So I have to be consistent with that or else I won't know what to do with it. Uh, 
but you get the general idea that these here are the headers. Now I'm going to color these headers so that we can see them and identify them as headers when we see the final product here. You don't have to do this on yours. This is just to make life a little bit easier for you um, when I show you the final product. And I'm going to put a period there. Okay, so I have this template all set. You'll notice my templates in the same folder. That's really helpful. Now here's the next thing I'll do, again, to make my life easier in just a few moments. I'm going to create a folder where all of these templates, once they get merged, drops into. So every one of these lines of, of data here, okay, each one of these rows, is going to get its own document created for it. When it does that, we're going to have to put those documents someplace, and so I'm creating the folder to send that to. So I'm going to click New Folder, and I'm just going to call this Walkthrough Form Feedback yeah, Letters. You can call it whatever you want. Doesn't There's nothing special about it, but it is all in the same place, and I really have learned over time you keep these all in a similar location so that it's easier for, for you when you are trying to walk back through and figure out where all of your data has gone. So I've created a form. I've created a spreadsheet, I've created my, my template, and I've created my, uh, my folder where all of those letters are going to be dropped once the templates are merged. Okay, so we've got everything set, now we're ready to start building. I'm going to go to Add-ons. If you don't have Autocrat, you would go to Get Add-ons. You would search for Autocrat. And yours, instead of saying manage like mine does, yours would say free, and you would go ahead about installing that. But mine already exists here. So add-ons, autocrat, launch. We're going to build what they call a job in autocrat. A job is just a simple way of saying the instructions that the uh, autocrat add-on needs to mail, merge, and send feedback. So we're going to call it, you can name it whatever you like, but I'm going to call it Sample Walkthrough Form Mail Merge. Perfect. Next. Now this is why we did all of the setup in advance. So from Drive, it's asking what template do you want to use? So I'm going to search Drive, and Right here you can see I've created that walkthrough form feedback template. That's why I use the word template in there. Well, there it is. So I've got it created. We always need to do that before we can select it, obviously, using our um, Autocrat add-on. So there it is. It pops up right here. I'm ready to go. Now what it's going to do is it's going to ask us, okay, we see in your document that you have something called timestamp. We think that this maps to the timestamp column located here, which it does. That's exactly what I want it to do. We see that you have one that says first name. We think that it links to the first name column that is here, and on and on. Okay. Now, if you are seeing that these don't necessarily link, what that's telling you is that somewhere in your template document, you did not exactly get it right. You maybe chose an uppercase when it was a lowercase. You left a space in there. So you can tell it to go and remap to the correct one, or you can redirect it. That's just fine. Or you can fix it on your actual template and go back through this process again. I might all match up, so we're in good shape. I'm going to click Next. File name. So when it creates a Google document that gets sent back to the person with the data on it, it wants a unique name for that Google document. And so we're going to give it that unique name here. Now, just like we used here, these little carrots along with the header to indicate to Autocrat where it should put data, we can do the same thing right here. So I'm going to put in carrot, carrot, first name, space, carrot, carrot, last name, space, and I'm going to put in timestamp. 
That gives it a unique name because everybody's going to have a different timestamp here, but it'll also put that person's first name, last name in the timestamp. You can do other things as well. For instance, you could put a, I'm going to put a dash there and say, walk through feedback for, so in my case here, it would read the other Brian, Yearling, walk through feedback for, and then the date that, that's in the timestamp. You can use any of the headers that are available in your spreadsheet, so the, any of those it'll draw from. All right, what type do you want to send it back as? Do you want to send it back as just a straight PDF or a Google document? That's totally your call. We're going to leave this piece alone right now. I click Next, and it says, okay, we now know that we're going to call it this. Where would you like all of these Google Docs that you're about to create to go? Well, remember, we created that fancy little folder just a few minutes before we did this. So I'm going to pick it called Walkthrough Form Feedback Letters. It's the one that I made with you just a few minutes ago. Good. So all of those are going to go into that folder. We don't need to worry about a dynamic folder. Just leave this alone. Okay. Step seven, set the merge condition. This is the big one. So if you want this to automatically run every time something happens, you have to set what they call a merge condition or a trigger. What is it that happens in the form that automatically sets it into motion and sends feedback to the person uh, that you wanted to send feedback to? So we're going to add a condition. It's going to automatically say when the timestamp is not null, meaning when there's a date that's in the timestamp, it will run the autocrat add-on and automatically send to the person as it's been instructed to do. And that's really all you have to do if you want basic, uh, basic uh, email feedback. So I click Next. Should we share a doc and send emails? Well, yes, that's exactly what we wanted to do. Something I'll re recommend to you is that you make it either a view only or a comment only doc. Okay. Um, then allow collaborators to reshare. Sure, that's up to you. Do you want them to be able to share with other people? I leave this set as no. And the last thing is, who is this email going to? In the to line, now we're going to use our little carrots again. So... Email address of the person. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to put that in carrots. So that's going to the email address of the person. I leave everything else a bit alone here. What is the subject of that going to be? Walk through feedback for first name. So you see we use the same skill over again. Last name. timestamp. Okay. And then you can type a message. Here is the feedback for, and what some people will do is they'll actually just copy and paste the same thing so that someone doesn't have to open the Google Doc as well. That's certainly an option um, if you like that one. Here is the feedback for, we'll just paste that in there. So you'll notice even in the body of the email, you can, you can paste this in and use these same little carrots. Great. Next, step nine. So we want this to run on the form trigger. What does that mean? Well, that means that just a few moments ago, you set a merge condition. The merge condition was when the timestamp had something in it or was not null, it would automatically run. So that's the trigger for this form. I click yes. It says, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I do. Great. I'm going to save that job. And it's all set to go. Okay. So now, when I'm in Autocrat, I can, if I made a mistake, I can edit the job here. I can get information on the job and preview it. I can delete a job. What we'll do here is I am going to preview this job. So if you'd like to see what it's going to look like for the first mergeable row, here's a rough idea of what it will look like if I've done my job correctly. Okay, let's take a look. And so you can see, remember, we used that red before. So all of these places that are red are where it has merged based on the data that was available in each of these rows. So that looks pretty good, and we're set to go with that. And now, 
I hit the play button and what you'll notice is over here these will begin to fill in. It has created for us four separate headers and those headers are what Autocrat uses to send out the information and to create the documents. So watch what happens. I'm going to click play. You'll see down here the merge sequence is starting. Because I've only got two lines of data, we should only need to do two of these. And you can kind of see in the background here that this data is filling in as the jobs run. I'm going to close Autocrat now so you can see what's happened here. So each document's got a merge doc ID. You've got some URLs to the, to the files that were created. Now this is the key. The document was successfully merged and the email was sent to and it tells me if it was sent there. So we know that this one successfully ran and we're ready to go. The first time you create a job, you'll manually run it as I just did. After that though, we should see this happening on its own. So here you can see the three merged documents. You can see the third one's actually already created. So there it is. Okay, and it moves just that quickly. So that one has been emailed and sent out. And if you take a look, here's what the email itself actually looks like. Okay, um, you can see that while we don't have the colorations here, it has mail merged some of the data. If you look at the subject, we've got the names, we've got the timestamp. So all of this has been made available, and then when the person clicks the link, they'll see the full feedback that you're looking to give them. So while there can be certainly pitfalls along the way, you can see this is generally the process that you go through to create a customized feedback loop when you want feedback sent from a Google form submission. As always, if you have questions, feel free to contact anybody on the Instructional Technology Coordinator team here in the School District of Waukesha.